So hi folks, it's a real pleasure to be here with uh, Peter Freitas, who was uh, Nigel Benn's manager and also his co-trainer. And Peter, of course, is a bit of a legend uh, in uh, the boxing business and doesn't do many interviews at all. So it's a great uh, honour for me to be able to have a chat with him. How did it all start? Because you had a really tough upbringing, didn't you? The thing was, I had a very, very strict dad. And I'm, when I mean strict, I mean, I'm talking about dad that used to hit you hard and hit you, you know. I mean, today you probably get arrested. God rest his soul. He's not here, but I still love him. But he brought us up hard, you know. Uh, his answer to everything was to hit you, you know, which in today's world wouldn't work. So I did have a very tough upbringing. And then my mum got ill when we was all very young. We got put in a children's home while she was in hospital. So we was all split up all the time. We never really had a family home as such, you know, like brother and sister. Did that affect you at all? I mean, did it... it did, yeah. yeah. But I, mean, uh, I mean, when I was eight, nine, I was always fighting because my dad used to hit me. And because he was too big for me to hit back, I used to go and take it out of someone else at school or wherever. Anyone, I just, I could have a fight with, I did. And my other two elder brothers were the same. Uh, it's just that I'd probably turn out to be the, the worst one out of them all, you know. Did, did you end up in, in children's homes? I'd done a children's home. I'd done a psychiatric, uh, I was under a psychiatric doctor from the age of eight. Right. For violence. Right. Uh, and then uh, I went into, uh, as I got a bit older, I, I started seeing the psychiatrist. And then uh, I got done in 74. And then I got put in detention centre in the Woking, just after the, the Woking bombings. I don't know if you remember the IRA yeah, yeah, bombings. Yeah, just yeah. after Guildford bombings. Yes, I know that. I got put in Send DC, which was just up there in 74. Then I come out of there, and then uh, two years later, I was in 76, I got put in a psychiatric ballstool. I done Felton ballstool in 76. Well, what, what was the reason that you went in there? I was uh, doing people with an hammer. I, I, I had an ammo and I had death stick carved out on it. That was the biggest trouble. It wasn't the fact that I used an ammo. Mm -hmm. The judge said the fact is you've got death stick carved out on it and drilled an hole through the bottom with a strap on it yeah. so that you could strap it on and spin it and hold it mm -hmm. so you never let go, you know? So, and and do, you, do you put down all that, that, that sort of violence definitely down to your background? The fact support. of it getting hit. Yeah. yeah, all the time. I was getting hit all the time by my dad. I mean, I'm talking about trousers down and belt till you bled. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm talking about severe beatings, not not just a slap. Yeah. Severe That's beatings. Yeah. I could never have touched one of my children. I never no. have done. What it is, my mum and dad used to fight like cat and dog. Mm -hmm. They should never have got married. They should have had children. I mean, my no. mum was 15 when she had my first brother. Yes. And she had five kids by the time she was 23. Mm -hmm. She had five kids. I mean, back in them days when it was hard. Yeah. Did you go out looking for trouble? I, I did look for fights. I wasn't a thief. I didn't right. steal. I didn't rob people. I didn't rob houses. I didn't do none of that. All I'd done was have tear-ups everywhere fighting. Really? Yeah. And, and was that something that you'd arrange or you just... Yeah, go to different areas. I'd fight yeah. the best from that area. The guy that was who we, who we thought was the best from that area, I'd go and meet him and fight. That was just yeah. me. I love fighting. I would see the trouble with me. I had no fear. I was game. Mm. I'm not saying I'm a villain, I'm the, I'm the artist or whatever. I just, I was game. Yeah. And I just enjoyed it. But then it wasn't with a knife. It wasn't with a, you know, it was only when I got older that I got a bit naughty. But yes. when I was young, it was all fisticuffs. So I earned yes. my reputation from street fighting as a kid. Mm -hmm. And then as I got older and older. Did any of that come from kind of racism that you, you experienced? I did suffer it, yeah, racism. Yeah. I did suffer it, yeah. Because yeah. when I was young, in the 60s, mm -hmm. there was, uh, I mean, this is even before the uh, wind rush came here. Yeah. You know, when I was walking around as a, uh, a young boy, in the early, in the 65, 66, mm -hmm. you know, just about the wind rush when they started coming over. It wasn't, but before that, I was getting called all kinds of names at school. Right. You know, you can imagine, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm mixed race. I was targeted like they are now today. Did you feel sort of, you know, very isolated or did you go around with a gang or were you very much a solo person? No, I was football crazy when I was oh, young. Really? I was a good footballer, yeah. I was a very good footballer. I was crazy football. Mm -hmm. I loved it. And all I'd done was play football. But then when I left the playground, like the school or wherever, all I wanted to do weekends when the school was, it was fight. Yes. Were you, were you attached to a particular team? I was on West Ham's books. I yeah. signed for West Ham. Oh, really? Yeah, when I was young, yeah, in 72, 73, mm -hmm. I was at West Ham. Yeah. But when I got expelled from school, mm -hmm. uh, they, they wouldn't have me there no more. They said, we can't keep you. And then yeah. I- Well, why, why were you expelled then? Fighting. Yeah. Fighting every day. Really? Every day fighting, yeah. Fight, did, fight, you, fight. did you ever suffer any extreme injuries with, with your fighting? Not when I was young, no. No. No, 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 no. I had street, I mean, I fisticuffs, I've got black eyes, all the rest, yeah. and you know. But to be honest, I know it sounds like I'm sitting there being big-headed, I never got beat. No. I never got beat. No. 
no. because I had the will to win the heart of a lion. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, an, you know, I'm super tough or whatever, but I, the fights I had weren't peak, but I didn't care. I had so much will to win. Yes. And I'm not a great big massive guy. No. And, no, and actually, sure we should say that, that you've actually lost quite a lot of weight. Yeah, I've lost five stone in weight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, we'll talk about yeah. maybe later yeah. on. Yeah. So when you got expelled, did you, how did you make your living? How did you get yeah. out and about? My trade, believe it or not, I'm a carpet fitter. I've been oh, a right. carpet fitter for 47 years. Yes. And I absolutely adore the job. Yeah. Nothing I, like, nothing I endured more than getting up down at work, laying my carpets, doing carpet fitting. And I've done contract work, domestic. Yeah. I've done the QE2 when it came back from the Falklands. That's true. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've done loads of big jobs. All hotels yeah. up London, all the Holiday Inn hotels, Hilton hotels. Yeah. All over the years, I've done all big contract stuff. That's what, I've done. That's what I am. I'm a carpet yeah. fitter by trade. So carpet fitting, did, did you move on to you know working on the door? Or... Yes, I was a doorman from the age of 16 yeah. right up to 30-odd. That's quite yeah. young to start. Being yeah, on the 16, door. yeah, I was a young, but I, I had a reputation in the East End, yeah. everybody knew me. Yeah. If Pete's on the door, you know, he's going to have a row back. Don't fucking start yeah. there because he's going to have a row. So, so, how early was it that you actually started to build that reputation? But let's say 11 years old, I really yeah. got the big, big name from when I was the first year at Seniors. Yes. That's, I lasted one year there, and I was the first year, yeah. and I was beating up fourth and fifth years. Right. which is the oldest years. I don't know how they work it now. It's uh, yeah. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 now, isn't it? So yeah. 9, 10, 11. I was beating the oldest kids in the school. Yes. Everyone was scared. Yeah. Did you like that feeling of sort of being... Yeah, like, I did, yeah. yeah. I got a little buzz off it because, I mean, the ice cream guy, Dave, he used to park his ice cream in there, van in the school playground. Yeah. He used to pay me every day. He used to give me, I think it was sixpence or like mm. sixpence or, or, or like two bob and a free ice cream every day just to not to have blood up his van and all that because really? I was fighting all the, yeah, all the blood going up the side of the van and he used to say to me Pete if I give you an ice cream you keep your fights away from the van because yeah. people wouldn't go near the van so you, you didn't go like into crime or anything no. it was just it was just violence on, on the streets yeah, street that. fighting I was yeah. just a uh, game I'm yeah. not going to say I'm a super hard man or whatever but I was just uh, game and game and had no fear yeah just so enjoyed it Tell us about life on the door, you know. Uh, I worked the doors for a lot of years. Uh, everybody knew me. I wasn't a bully, but I was obviously worked with a, t uh, a few other guys that I trusted. I never yeah. worked with strangers. No. I only worked with people I know. Yeah. Is, uh, is it very much a team on the door? My little team, uh, or me and my friends, yeah. no one was in charge. We never, nobody, no one person was in yeah. charge. I never tried to tell anybody else what to do and nobody else told me what to do. Because yeah. believe it or not, one thing I will say on here, I ain't a sheep yes. for nobody. No. I'm the I'm the uh, I'm the leader. If anything, I ain't yes. a sheep. Yes. You understand? I don't follow nobody because I worked in Morrow's, which is Stratford yes. in the East yeah, End. Yeah. Well, in Morrow's, and that yeah. was a tough place. You had Stratford v Canning Town every Friday night and Saturday yeah. night having it off. You know, yeah. and yeah. I'm a proper East End boy, and I've worked the doors. All, you know, since I was a kid, and there's loads of trouble. And then in '85, I got done for murder. Did you? Yeah, I got done for murder in 85. Yeah, I got arrested and charged. Uh, I got arrested. I didn't get charged. I got arrested and held for three days on a murder charge. Yes. Because what happened was I had, I was, I become more than the doorman in Moros. I ended up being the manager. Yes. I took over the pub. Yes. The very next night, I was there on my own. Anyway, uh, a guy got killed. Right. All I will say is I got arrested for it. Yes. He, the guy was an out and out bully. He yes. was a very close friend with Mickey Gluckstead. Yes. They was running around bullying everybody at the time in every yeah. pub and club around the area. Yes. But they obviously went to the wrong place and messed up with the wrong people. Yes. That's all I can say about that. But you, you got off. Oh um, uh, yeah, they, they let me go after three, four days. They wanted to charge me. Yes. But there was a guy, one of my friends, uh, who was a boxer, pro boxer called Abby Bucharest. Yes. Uh, very nice friends. He was uh, giving it all the large to the superintendent in charge of the case. Yes. After he got uh, pulled in for questioning, yeah. he was saying, well, send, a, send any of your office down there, I'll fucking do them and all that, apparently, he was saying. And they said, oh, you're tough, are you? He went, yeah, yeah, and they went, right, charging me murder. And they oh, charged really? him for the murder instead of me. Really? They wanted to charge me. Yes. But they charged him instead for all of his... Yeah. They charged him and one of my other close friends. Did, did he go down for it? What happened was, where they made the mistake was, the, gov the, the, the police uh, charged them as a joint venture. Yes. So when they went to the Old Bailey for trial, him and my friend, yeah. the jury came out and said, can we find one guilty and one not guilty? Yes. And the judge said, no, they've been charged as a joint venture. You've either got to find them both guilty or both not guilty. <laughs> and so they said, well, we've, we believe one's innocent and one's guilty. 
So the judge said, well, they're both not guilty then. And that's yeah. how they got off, both of them. So, tough days on the, on the doors. Yeah, yeah. But did, did you enjoy it? Yeah, I, I used to love a scrap. Yeah. So, it was for me, Friday and Saturday nights, yeah. I loved. Yeah. But the only thing was, I had a daughter at a young age. Mm-hmm. Uh, my daughter, Laura, she's uh, 42 now. Yeah. Yeah, uh, she's... Uh, she was my apple in my eye, obviously. So yes. I, I wanted to get home safe to Laura, you know. Yes. Uh, well, was it affecting all of that kind of aggravation and stuff? Was it affecting your private life? It did, because I, I, I'm going to be honest now. My wife was a very good wife. Yes. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and slay her. She was no. a great wife. And I really abused her kindness by no. messing with other women. Yeah. The, when you're in a club, you know, if you're a doorman, the girls rock, flock round you like sheep. Yeah. And I just couldn't say no. Yeah. And my wife divorced me, and I don't blame my one bit for doing it. Yes. Uh, only recently she divorced me, by the way. 32 years we stayed married. <laughs> but, it, you know, 10 years ago she had the sense to get up and divorce me, and I don't blame her for it. No. Not one bit. Do you, uh, do you say you still get on with her? No, uh, yeah. I don't see her. Yeah. Uh, the, oh, don't, don't no, 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 I'm fine about it yeah, because yeah. she's done nothing wrong to a degree. Yeah. 90% of it was all my fault. Yes. But 10% was. Like, the, over the last 10 years, she turned my two eldest children away from me. Yes. And that's what's hurt me. Yeah. 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 Well, and it's something that I can't accept. Would you, would you like to, uh, presume, get that message? I have two children in my life. Yeah. Of course yeah. I want Laura and Ricky back in my life. Obviously, yeah. they're my children, my grandchildren I'm missing. Yeah. But what can I do about it? Yeah. Apart from get violent. Yeah. And then I end up, you know, sitting in prison yeah. for life. Do you, do you ever feel... I can't go in anything 50%, sorry. If it, no. if it, if it gets to that stage where something's heavy yes. on me, yeah. I can wind myself up yeah. to kill instantly. That's yeah. how bad I get. Really? So I have to keep myself out of the way, calm mm-hmm. and quiet because I'll wind myself up to a state of frenzy. You understand yeah. that? That's yeah. how bad I get. When they analysed you early on, psychiatrically, well, what were they saying about you? Oh, they definitely said I've got uh, uh, bad tendencies, uh, yes. uh, violent tendencies, and yes. uh, they put me on drugs back in the year. When I was a youngster, 16, they put me on Ativan and Lydactyl. I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't take drugs. Yes. You know, I mean, I haven't drunk alcohol for four years. Yes. I don't smoke and I don't take drugs. I never took drugs in my life, ever. No. No. I'm not I'm not that way of life. I'm a clean living guy. Yeah. So you still feel you've got that little edge there if you know. I'm, I'm frightened because obviously I'm not in the same strength or the capabilities no. of what I was. Yes, that's the difference. But up there I'm worse, I'm dangerous. <laughs> if yeah. I want to be, believe yeah. me I am. I'm not saying I'm more dangerous than anybody else, but I'm a dangerous man. If I get upset yes. or I wind myself up, mm-hmm. I, I could take a life like that instant. I wouldn't give them monkeys. And also you, you've had uh, a lot of things to contend with uh, Pete's been suffering from cancer haven't you for the last I've been suffering for cancer for two years now yeah, yeah. Uh, how, how has that affected you sort of mentally and physically I'm upset that not one member of the family come and see me nobody's yeah. nobody's come I've been through it all on my own absolutely yeah. 100% on Which my is own tough. that's tough I had to get up go to hospital with my bag on my own mm-hmm. get operated on come home on my own do me washing cooking cleaning ironing all myself yeah. after having all my guts you know cut open and all mm-hmm. the rest of it do you prefer, though, being on your own like that? Oh, I'd never you... marry again. I made the mistake of getting married to uh, uh, a long, young lady. Uh, yeah. That was a, a mistake, and yeah. uh, it's a, a mistake I, I would never make again. Yeah. You've seen yeah. to my wife. There, there will never be another Julie, no. you know, in my life. There will never be another Julia. But that's the, that's, I, I have to learn. I have to let her have the, the, the few years she's got left. I have to have her. Hopefully she enjoys her few years she's got. Because yeah. she did put up with a lot of shit from me. Yeah. And I don't mean physical violence or nothing like no, that, no. but just me womanising yeah. and being an adulteress, basically. Yeah. But I suppose, you know, I mean, as, as young men and all of that, it's kind of difficult when you've suddenly been, you know, women throwing themselves at you and stuff like that, isn't it? I'm not well, saying it's an excuse. I wasn't a bad-looking guy either. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. When I was young, I had jet yeah. black hair. and yeah. I mean, I'm an old man now. I'm 60-odd yeah. years old. But yeah. when I was young, I was a quite a good-looking guy, and yeah. the girls attracted... I was attracted to the girls, and girls yeah. attracted to me, so... Obviously, I didn't have the willpower to say no. no. That I'll, I've got a lovely family at home and I should be sticking with my family. Mm-hmm. And also, obviously, as you know, later on in life, I become Nigel Ben's manager. Yeah, and yeah, obviously, on that, TV, yeah. they, they've got to see you on TV, you're a star. Yeah. And I was so only the manager. Let's, let's talk about that transition. So you work yeah. with the doors and everything else like that. How do you then end up working with Nigel yeah. Ben? Well, what happened was I was on the door and yeah. I was, uh, I run a, a restaurant and a wine bar called Joanna's and the Apollo, which wow. the Apollo owned, yes. which was like two doors away, the, the, yeah. where all the celebrities used to eat. Mm-hmm. 
So I've looked after Benny Hill, yeah. Glenn Murphy from London's yeah, yeah. Burning, he's been in there. I looked after Glenn, uh, yeah. all them kind of people that was in yeah. there, you know, all the footballers yeah. and all that, and uh, Frank McAvenny and all them yeah. West Ham players and all that. So I know all them, yeah. grew up with all them, looking after them, all the page three girls, mm-hmm. and uh, went out with a couple of them. I won't yeah. say no <laughs> names, yeah. went out with a couple of them. Yeah. Uh, introduced to Nigel yeah. when he came in with Ambrose and a couple yes. of others, got introduced. Yeah. Pete's on the door here, Pete runs it. Yeah, oh, I'm pretty, yes, I know all about you. Yeah. Yes, obviously he's from Ilford, so he yes. knows all about Pete DeFrayers. Yes. But he never met me. So yes. we met anyway, and we sort of hit it off, yes. but it was only a friendship, mm. not to just hello, how are you type of thing. I mean, mate Gilly, who owned the restaurant, he said to me, Pete, he's fighting uh, Michael Watson. He's defending yes. his Commonwealth title against Michael Watson. He said, I've got the VIP tent for the celebrities. Yes, yeah. Will you do the security for me? Can you get a few of your pals? And I said, yeah, yeah of course, yeah, no problem. So anyway. I think it was about nine or ten of us I got, and we done the VIP at Finsbury Park. Yes. So you had the main arena uh, tent where Nigel fought in, and then yeah. you had the tent where the VIP stood and had yeah. their drinks, and yeah. before yeah. they went in through yeah. a separate. So what my job was to let my lads keep an eye on the tent, mm-hmm. and my job was to walk each celebrity into the, yes. the, the, the venue and seat them. Yes. That was my job at the time. Yeah. Anyway, after he got beat, I. Uh, I had met Nigel on the Monday after at the Apollo one lunch time he came in and he came over to me and we had a chat and he went to me Pete he goes could we could we have a good talk I said yeah yeah so we had a chat and he said to me look I got beat he said I got my ass whipped he said I don't like it mm-hmm. he said so I'm going to be packing my bag he said and I'm going over to America yes he said to Florida he said, Miami, Florida. He said, I'm going to go out there. He said, if I'm going to be a world champion, this was his exact words. He said, yeah. if I'm going to be a world champion, I've got to go and beat the Yanks. Yes. That will tell me, gauge me if I'm in the right ballpark. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I said, yeah, okay. So he said, look, I need someone to come out there with me. He said, I've got a trainer out there called Vic Andretti. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He said, I'm going to be staying near Vic in Miami. He said, and uh, I'm going to go out there. He said, and I want you to come out there after about a week, 10 days, will you come? So I said, well, hang on, Nigel, I've got a wife and, yeah. uh, at the time, I had two kids. Yes. So I said, yeah, I said, uh, Nigel, I've got a wife and two kids at home. I'll sort out sending you, giving your wife some money each week and all that, and I'll look after you out there, you won't want for nothing. So I said, yeah. okay, I'll speak to the wife and see what yeah. she says. She said, Pete, if that's what you want to do, and if you sort of like your goal, go out there. Yes. I'll be fine. So I said, okay. She had good parents that looked after her, so she was okay. And, uh, we, you know, apart from me womanising, we had a good uh, a relationship apart yes. from, obviously, that. I mean, I wasn't a drunk. I wasn't a, you know, it was, it was quite good. I flew out to Miami with him mm-hmm. and we stayed out there together. And uh, our bond just got stronger and stronger. 